William the Conqueror was one of England's greatest rulers, invading in 1066 and winning the Battle of Hastings. He later introduced the feudal system, which classified the population of England into separate classes, who all had a place in this system. The Tokugawa Ayasu was the emperor of Japan from 1546 to 1616. He also introduced a very similar system to that of Williams. The documentary will compare these two rulers and determine which was a more effective leader. Four inquiry, inquiry questions will be analysed and elucidated to determine whether this hypothesis is correct. The first question is how popular the leader was. The next one is whether the leader had established an effective legal system. The third question is how much land the leader owned, and the fourth one is how well they protected their country. Both William I and the Tokugawa Ayasu were very unpopular among the people in their countries. William the Conqueror laid down taxes very severely on the English people, which caused the English to view him as greedy and cruel. Furthermore, there were many rebellions against William, and his early reign was plagued with violence. William and his army crushed all of the, rebe the rebellions against him though, so eventually the people of England were fearful to do anything against him or contrary to his will. Despite this, he was also respected for his wisdom and power. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle for 1087 stated that This King William of whom we speak was a very wise man, a very powerful and more worshipful and stronger than any predecessor of his had been. This suggests that the people of England have respected him more than the former king of England, Harold II. The Tokugawa Ayesu, though, was a very cruel man. He had many rivals all throughout Japan, which he did eventually defeat to gain supreme power. Ayesu had to deal with many peasant uprisings and samurai uprisings, which suggests that he was not just unpopular among the common people of his empire, but also the soldiers who protected it. There were many small rebellions against Ayasu among, Jap um, among Japan as well, but none of them were successful in having any negative effect on him. Therefore, the Tokugawa Ayasu was a lot more unpopular than William the Conqueror, as even though William the Conqueror was a belt against, he was respected among his people. The legal systems of the Tokugawa Ayasu and William the Conqueror were extremely different to each other. William I's legal system was a lot like the one in place today. If accused of a crime, the convicted person had to face trial by ordeal to decide whether they were guilty or not. The court dealt with all but the most serious crimes. The most serious crimes were tried directly by the king's court. The Tokugawa Ayesu's legal system was very different, though. The Criminal Element website states that there was no innocent until proven guilty. If a person was accused of something, they were almost always convicted of that crime. And furthermore, the punishers were very cruel. William I introduced many new laws into England, and they had an impact on all the English people. Some of them were quite harsh, and they were questioned often, so William the Conqueror often tried to convince the English that his rules were lawful, although a lot of them were cruel and severe. He believed that if a person betrayed him, he should show no mercy, and most of the time when this happened, the person got executed. The Tokugawa Ayasu's laws, though, were much worse. The punishments were extremely strident, but some things that would be considered terrible crimes like rape and child abuse were just overlooked. Despite this, Ayasu enforced many laws and rules about small things, like which class of people should purchase fine silk or use tortoise shell. Thus, William the Conqueror's legal system was more effective, as even though his rules were harsh, at least there was an official court and a way of, and a way of punishing people, unlike the legal system of the Tokugawa Ayasu. William I and the Tokugawa Ayasu both owned a significant amount of land, and they both had different ways of dividing it out among their people. Although, William the Conqueror owned more land than the Tokugawa Ayasu, as he did not just rule over England, he was the Duke of Normandy as well. Both William I and Ayasu also distributed their land strategically to strengthen their allies and family, and when they won land after defeating rivals, they both used and distributed it among their vassals. But according to New World Encyclopedia, William tended to distribute it in more thought of the feudal system, as well as just for power, where the Tokugawa Ayesu distributed it in such a way that it was more for military strategy. In terms of land owned, William the Conqueror and the Tokugawa Ayesu were relatively similar, 
with the exception of the fact that William I kept a lot of land under his direct control, such as royal forests or other crown lands. The Tokugawa Ayasu, though, managed to set up a whole new capital in Japan, Edo, or today's Tokyo, and built a strategic castle there. Ayasu also personally controlled the land around Edo, so he could have a city all to himself. Overall, William the Conqueror was more effective in how he controlled and distributed his land, as he did not just um, own land in England, but also in Normandy. And instead of just distributing land for military purposes, he managed to use it for strengthening his feudal system as well as his allies and family. Both William the Conqueror and the Tokugawa Ayesu had effective ways of protecting their country. Ayesu protected Japan by strengthening his allies and families and having a sizable army, whereas the ancient fortresses website documents that William I protected England by building new castles and other physical defences, as before William invaded, England did not have many castles or other methods of defence. Military force was also a very important factor for both William I and the Tokugawa Ayesu. Ayasu won most battles and, and defeated most of his rivals because he had an enormous advantage in the size of his military force, and according to the History on the Net website, William the Conqueror had over 3,000 knights loyal to him after the Battle of Hastings. With this military force, William I and his army defended England against all attackers. The Tokugawa Ayasus and William I's castles and defences were both placed at strategic locations to defend their countries effectively. And since both leaders were not extremely popular among the, po among the people of their country, these castles and defences were often used as protection from the rebellions and uprisings against them. The Tokugawa Ayasu, though, was more effective at protecting his country as he had size advantages in his military and he expanded Japan's defences by building more where there were some already, instead of William the first methods of building new defences where there were none. In conclusion, both William the Conqueror and the Tokugawa Ayasu were both effective leaders, and they both had their flaws. Overall though, William the Conqueror was the most effective leader, as he was more popular among his people, his legal system was more effective and fair than the Tokugawa Ayasu's, and he controlled and distributed his land more effectively. Even though the Tokugawa Ayasu defended his country more sufficiently than William I, William achieved supreme leadership. The Middle Ages were a time of blood, battles and besiegement, and for a country for, to succeed, it had to have an exceptional leader. William I and the Tokugawa Ayasu were just what England and Japan needed to pull them out of the civil wars and corruption. They did just that. But overall, William the Conqueror succeeded in being the most effective leader over Japan's Tokugawa Ayasu.